And for our next presenter, she is the current director of the Sivano City Center and a full professor of comparative literature at the Department of Communications, Linguistics, and Literature of the University of San Carlos, where she teaches both graduate and undergraduate courses. She was past chair of the Division of the Humanities of the National Research Council of the Philippines, or NRCP, and the National Committee on Literary Arts of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. A creative writer, she is a member of the Women in Literary Arts Cebu. The Bathalad o the Bathalan ong halad sa dagang or Bathalad and the Mabugna ong anak sa dagang. She currently serves as a commissioner for the Cebuano language of the Commission sa Wikang Filipino and is also a commissioner of the Cultural and Historical Affairs Commission. She is a member of the Technical Committee on Literature of the Commission on Higher Education and the editor-in-chief of Tugkad, a literary and cultural studies journal. She works part-time in translation. So let us all give a round of applause for Dr. Hope Saban Panhu. Good afternoon, everyone. Amayang hapon sa tanan. So um, my, my line of discipline is really literary and cultural studies so um mas literature focused takaron instead of the teaching module and uh, my paper has to do with the poetry of three Cebuana writers who are also members of the women in literary arts now next slide please doreen fernandez in tikim essays on philippine food and culture says that in the act of eating we ingest the environment but we do not stop at that for we filipinos make eating the occasion for ritual and ritual the occasion for eating so we build ceremony around it and we create celebration when it's eating time it's always uh, an occasion for joy so um, the experience of food is ephemeral and doreen fernandez also says that what one puts into the mouth is the end result of a process that starts with the sea, the soil, animal life. And I think we take it for granted. We just eat. We don't even think about this. So in the act of cooking, we make statements about ourselves, about our understanding of relationships between ingredients, uh, about our perception of taste and appropriateness. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So these are the three women writers. We have Dr. Elinda Alburo, past chair of the Women in Literary Arts, Cora Almerino, who is now based in the United States, and recently uh, she's a multi-awarded poet. Actually, all of these women are multi-awarded poets. And uh, Esther Tapia, who is based in Germany, but they all write in Cebuano. And the poems that I will be discussing are already translations into English, but they have their uh, original Cebuano um, versions. So the poetry on food by these women is representative of this notion that the culture of a place is a blend of understanding the relationships between the land and its people, food being the connection between this in their writing. So next slide, please. Eating practices construct Ah, uh, is that the old one? It's the, uh, that one, okay. So eating practices construct identity and through many social, si and though many social scientists have examined the symbolic importance of food, uh, it is more focused on being an expression of re regional identity. And we've been talking about this, how you know, lechon is tied to Cebu, but there's also lechon in Manila, or how puso is like iconic Cebuano, but there's also like puso in other areas, but they're called by different names. And, you know, there are all these, even the shomai satisa and all of that. Uh, now, uh, next slide. Since food functions as a metaphor, wala uh, mga It's, um, since food functions as a metaphor within a culture, it represents values and beliefs about a place, identity, and social order. And poetry seems to be the most logical place to deeply explore 
these symbolic associations because you can see that in how it's expressed in a poem, no? And um, Cebuano society provides its food. Okay, uh, that one. Uh, next slide. So uh, poets generally, and most of you here write, I have uh, several friends here in the audience who are also poets, write in uh, work, they work on the province of metaphor. So I'm sure that all of you know what a metaphor is. And they knowingly explore the images and concepts expressive of their cultures. And food has shown itself to be one of the most relevant symbols for examination. So a poet working with significant symbolic ideas of place and gender employs food to probe values with it. And one example is Corazon Almerino. Now, I have two poems of hers. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Spaghetti alla carbonara. And it's a quite shocking um, companion. Unsaon pagisa sa bana nga manghulga sa asawa nga dili kay balong muluto. Okay. So, uh, Almerino is actually interested in examining the topic and interrogating the associations in Spaghetti alla Carbonara and this other poem. Um, <clears throat> so much of what she writes about seeks to express the complex feelings of oppression and empowerment. So first, yung empowerment at to sa Spaghetti alla Carbonara found in connection with women and food. So next slide, we have the spaghetti alla carbonara. I'm sure all of you have tasted this, but um, let's look at the associations that uh, Almerino puts in this poem. Uh, next slide. So she has many symbolic uh, meanings of food. And in the beginning of the poem, you see here, the persona has no experience of tasting spaghetti alla carbonara. Especially ala carbonara, no kayo na amtay spaghetti ala Jollibee. So being used because the 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 persona here must be used to something like Jollibee, kay tomato-based pasta sauces, raman uh, traditional Cebuano mix of ground meat and hot dog and cheese, which we can find here. But carbonara is what? What? Uh, how how is carbonara different? A white sauce, very good. Sayang, wala ko'y daghan prices kay kanong nanubag, tagaan tamog price. So now, uh, it was only last Wednesday, this is the continuation of the poem. It was only last Wednesday night that I tasted spaghetti alla carbonara. It has a different flavor. No tomato sauce, eggs, sliced bacon, and parmesan cheese are the ingredients. Most of the spaghetti I had tasted before were red, mixed with hot dog, cheese, uh, Okay, next slide, please. And continue, continuing, note there's a cap, it, it's cap, caps, that's not a typo. Upon the discovery of G, that I was not accustomed to the pasta, he at once invited me to his apartment. He said he would cook for me, spaghetti alla carbonara. True enough, I was there last Wednesday night. While we ate, I caught him glancing furtively my way. It happened again and again, until our words grew shorter, until we gazed at each other long. Okay, next slide. Um, what happened to my... I stood up and he followed. I moved to the wall where I leaned, where I leaned back. He stood in front of me. By using... Erotic image, imagery here. The woman equalizes the sensual positions as she takes the lead and the man follows. Diba? It's, it's she who takes the lead. Then echoing the metaphors that relate only to a pleasurable experience, she says, we spoke again. Next slide. We spoke again with butterflies for words. Um, then we laughed loud. The silence caught our laughter, and again, we gazed into each other's eyes long. So the center in all of these lines is the sensuality of eating and the act of gaining power that is focused on the persona's growth. Um, butterflies for words may refer to what? Very light what? 
What can it refer to? Butterflies for words. Maybe I should not corrupt your imaginations because you're still young. Kisses. Oh, did I hear kisses? Yes. Or light caresses. And the pleasure of resonating in the laughter. Almerino gives the person, the persona agency through control, not just over the pleasures of her own body, but also uh, that, to, uh, that of the man to enjoy as well. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, next slide. I closed my eyes uh, because this is the end of the poem. And only then did I understand the taste of spaghetti alla carbonara in his hands and tongue had, hid, had been hidden all along the singular flavor. So, wow, that blows your mind. Will you ever be able to eat spaghetti alla carbonara without this thinking about this poem again? <laughs> or maybe you will, you will date a, a special someone Print this poem and date that special someone and give a copy of this poem after, you know, after the date. So the symbolism of the mouth is very significant as it not only centers on consuming spaghetti, but it also is through the mouth and on the hands and on the tongue that she tastes the distinct flavor. So see, the flavor is like synesthetic, no? The sense of Another being consumed is so intense that Almerino goes so far as to link the experience of eating to that of kissing and making out. Are you all 18? <laughs> so by comparing the joy of eating and the enjoyment of her own pleasure, Almerino reclaims the pleasures of a woman's body and rejects the idea that a woman should be passive. Okay, so... I will do a turn around here because the next poem is going to be a bit different. How to saute a husband who berates his wife who doesn't know how to cook. Okay? This is, <clears throat> this is troubled territory. And it's a problem of domestic abuse. So let's go, go straight to the poem. Okay? Heat oil in a frying pan. Saute onions and garlic. Immerse the fists. Sorry, for typo na siya, fist na. That he will punch your face with. Do likewise with the feet, the feet that he will kick you with. Mix in other parts of his body. Bring to a boil. Pierce with a fork. Better with a knife. Season with curses and maledictions. Taste. Remove from the fire. Eat. If no good, throw to the dogs. <laughs> wow. This is, but you know, when Almerino published this several years ago, I think it's a decade ago or what, this was uh, as a very, sen uh, quite, it caused quite a sensation because the food in this poem becomes a metaphor for giving just desserts to a husband who, what does he do to his wife? Abuse. He abuses his wife, he batters his wife, specifically the slow, tense build-up of cutting the body parts and cooking them over the fire. So a man can batter his wife, but she can turn the tables and chop him to pieces, curse him while cooking all the body parts, and feed them to the dogs. Diba? So, uh, guys, <laughs> that's a warning also. Now, the persona in this poem creates food that is a female-specific source of agency to give voice to the desire to fight back. Pierce with a fork, better with a knife. Season with curses and malediction. So women have access to power in the same way that they have access to food. If they have constructed spaces within the previously exploited roles of wife and cook, Writing about cooking can become empowering as a venue for resistance and of liberation. So here, Almerino has created a symbolic place of power for women in the kitchen. Okay. Now, I have another poem. Uh, this one is, uh, okay, it's about female agency and power. And I will be talking about Erlinda Alburo 
uh, who talk specifically of food characteristics and staples in are we going back to Badian? Uh, next slide. So in the poem, uh, who is from Badian or who has gone to Badian or gone to the south? Okay. How about the kids? Wala. So uh, would someone like to read this? Sige. Uh, Trisha, please. Asamang mic. Para naasag ko yung audience participation, magduka-duka niya mo diha. Okay. <laughs> Are we going back to Badian? You know this picture is a good shot. We're lined up in front of the old car. Its flaking pant bared what a pity. But our faces are all smiles or laughing. After two days of picnicking up and down, Kawasan Falls boating around Badian Island, then feasting on raw fish in Matutinao kiosk. Next slide. Next slide. Continue. Okay. Next True, we had a flat tire four times, no less. But wasn't the tuba at Mualboal good? We stopped by Dumanhug for a CR, had a nap. While a fresh breeze brushed our faces and the sights of Barili were delightful, like the spaces green with grass and mangrove. And continue. Next time, let's buy again some sticky pop rice. At Kar Kar, pair of takoy with shakoy and gor gorgoreas. But oh, don't we also pass the big ducket tree? Along the cliff where they pushed Mary Joy, I say why not Talisay instead of Badian? We can't afford it anyway, and our car has retired. Okay, thank you very much, Trisha. So you see here, it's like we are taken around uh, the south of Cebu, and in the original poem, the reference is to the quinila, which is a staple that we find on the coast, but we also in our household. So then they have a stopover at Mualboal, and the persona praises the tuba, or you know, the coconut palm toddy, which they drank as a good one. Alburo also uses the rituals and images associated with this food to go to showcase the region, because actually it's like, you know, in Karkar, you can find this and make a specific personality of, for, the prob, for the southern parts of Cebu. So there is a sense of only being a Cebuano that allows you access to understand the personal and cultural history of Cebu. And um, I actually have another poem in the paper that I wrote for this conference. There is another poem, but I know that uh, I only have limited time, so I will go straight to the uh, next poem of uh, Esther Tapia, which is Pandesal, Pandeleche, Francis, and Bitoon. Uh, these are different kinds of bread. And um, this demonstrates the Cebuano identity represented in the different kinds of bread and linking it to daily rituals based on the persona's experience. So next slide, you have um, the experience of the persona where uh, it, she or uh, she na reminisces on the texture of each kind of bread, sharing with the reader her sense of delight. Pandesal and Samada, Bitoon and Francis. Francis, di ay na. Francis, man ato itawag papalita hug Francis be. Fragrant and so tempting, the crunchy tail of a star. Di ba kay kagumkum man ng koan? Uh, so this daily ritual has been interrupted for some time, as stated in the subtitle, because of the pandemic. Oh, <laughs> wajo. Nangatug na mo di ha. So, no one meets the delivery boy since the month has gone into the pandemic and the persona is isolated. She's in the second floor of the house, longing for the taste of her favorite bread. And next slide. So, one, uh, when would I taste? Um, ona. So, naghuat na lang siya kay Dipman. On sa ganitong kuan sa pandemic, no, uh, uh, you have to be isolated. No contact. So, when would I taste again my favorites and the rust on the gates would fall and the powder from the buds of the tambis be swept away? So, you see this deep longing of the persona and eating food specific to a locale, to a, to a region, to a place. 
need some insider knowledge of all the culture. But one needs to be aware as well of whatever stereotypes are made to mix with food, such as, you know, uh, I think Dr. Mahares had mentioned this, you know, dog eaters. Diba, ingon sila, Filipinos are dog eaters. And, and these other stereotypes. So we have to be very care careful about that. Though in the poetry examples that I mentioned here, there is none that applies to that. Next slide. So um, the Cebuano poets here portray women in food preparation as claiming the kitchen as a source of empowerment as well as a means to navigate the region where the shared understanding turns into insider knowledge and a uniting source of agency. Food can provide a connection to the past as well as to the community, and it can tra transform memory into a sense of pleasure. It can also remind readers to think about food with the complexity that it deserves. So the next time you know you eat, you, I know we are all in a rush sometimes, I, I have to be in class or gadalita, but always take the time to savor food because it's different when you feel nourished by the food that you eat. All right, so I end my presentation there. Thank you for... Thank you very much, Dr. Hope Sabanpanyu.